All right. Welcome everyone. This is the Jenkins Infrastructure Meeting from the for 18 August 2020. Thanks for being here. Um, okay, so we've got one topic, change in Docker terms of service. Uh, another topic, Oracle, oh, these are from last time. I'm, oh no, 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 this is not. These are new topics, right? So Oracle Cloud conversation is another topic. Are there other topics that need to be added to the agenda? So JIRA one? Oh yes, JIRA migration, JIRA upgrade plan, status report, good, okay. Would you mind doing that one earlier? Um, I'm interested in that, but I have to leave soon. You bet, absolutely. Let's put it, it, it with, unless there are objections, I'm gonna put it first on the list. Sounds good. Okay, uh, let's see, uh, September, uh, release release status reports slash uh, yeah so release status reports I think would be good to discuss any other topics okay then let's get started oh yeah I think we have enough okay all right uh, so the Jira upgrade plan status met with Linux Foundation, uh, including Andrew Grimborg, uh, Brian Warner, Steve Ira, and one other person to discuss that, uh, reviewed, reviewed the plan with them. They confirmed that uh, they are willing to host our JIRA with our identity management, and they identified several action items that uh, I need to take in order to confirm that we can make the transition successfully. So, um, are willing to host with, with our identity management, so we do not have to do a transition to their identity management. They noted that it would be easier for them if we did use their identity management, but I set the, I, I had to acknowledge the clear expectation. I can't see us transitioning 100,000 accounts from the Jenkins infrastructure to their identity management and completing the JIRA upgrade all by the November 28th end of support of our current JIRA version. So um, actions for Mark, uh, I will need uh, additional reviewers on the plan. Uh, there are some specific questions around SSL certificates for the test drive and SSL certificates for uh, the certificate control for the final destination because right now we own the jenkins-ci.org domain completely and we control it correctly uh, but they will be running a server that is in that domain can they do let's encrypt if we give them access give they, they said that they can, and that is their preference. And so that's what our intention is to work through Let's Encrypt, continue to use Let's Encrypt the way we do today, uh, but we've got to coordinate the, the precise details of how that, how we can do that Let's Encrypt delegation so that they can use a Let's Encrypt generated certificate just like we do. And, and that's, that's just, it's just details that have to be made to work. It's not that I'm frightened of technical difficulty. Uh, our data volume is not of any great worry to them at all. Uh, compared to some others that they've transitioned, we look small. I really they said that they have only uh, 300,000 accounts. So <laughs> Jenkins is probably 30% of this database. Ah. Uh, but, well, uh, let's trust them. Well, it was the thing that we were checking was I was checking the size of our the number of records in our database and the size of our assets and asking if we needed to do a physical data transfer on drive or something. And they looked at the data size and said, no, nah, we can transfer that data very easily over the network. So not a not a big risk. Um, any questions with regard to the Jira upgrade plan? The, the plan document is available. It's public. You're welcome to comment on it. I would love to have comments on it. I can link to that uh, document here in the, 
Oops, there it is, Jenkins Jira. I'll just put a link into the notes so that everybody's got easy access. I'm going to assume with no other questions at the next topic then. Change in Docker terms of service. Um, someone else is going to need to guide me on this one. I don't feel terribly comfortable that I understand the details of it. Yeah, so there are two major issues. One is retention for six months for unused images, so like written before. Okay. And second uh, topic is pool limits because uh, basically you have limited pools from your free account and at the same time uh, users uh, who are not paid accounts also have uh, limited pools for them and my understanding that is going to be a more significant issue than uh, image retention policy because i guess we could make it a try to have a garbage collection of images because in the worst case, you should be able to restore uh, all of them. Uh, but pool limits uh, is likely going to be a serious uh, issue for us. So then is the, is the question there then, do we need to seek, seek funding for a, uh, for a pro or whatever for a, a non-free license? So it really depends on how they calculate users because the price per user is really low. It's something like $7 per enterprise account. Uh, there are two obvious issues. What if the price goes up? And secondly, how they do they calculate users? Because uh, all of us know that uh, you can calculate them differently. And well, if it's just number of accounts uh, registered in the organization, yeah, for us it would be something like $50 per month. It's not something to really worry about taking all uh, the infrastructure costs. Uh, but uh, if it's going to rise, or if uh, they, let's say, count all the users who pull uh, from the Jenkins infrastructure, it's completely different matter. So as long as the current prices uh, remain in place, I'm not concerned. Okay. And for example, I would rather prefer to pay uh, than uh, to invest time in infrastructure migration. So I if, agree with you. We can confirm that it's within, let's say, $100 uh, per month. Yeah, we can uh, sustain it even with the, our current budget. Are they, so still, are they still talking about the pool limit? I can't see it when I'm Googling. Everything's just talking about the idle image thing. Let's see. Mm, I haven't checked it since uh, the tweet storms. Uh, they definitely updated their guidance after the tweet storms. <laughs> oh, it's possible. So that one needs needs more investigation to see if that is a real plan or not. To, you know, well, pull limits are I still wouldn't planned. worry too much because the real plan may uh, change uh, multiple times before November. But yeah, for us, it's rather what do we do if uh, the plan doesn't change and uh, if uh, paying for enterprise account is not feasible. Yeah, I, I saw on Twitter that the Linux Foundation um, was saying that they, could, they can offer them for the Kubernetes one. I assume we can do the same thing if we want it through the CDF. Might so, be. Okay, so, so that feels like it's something we ought to take to, the, is that something we should take to the CD, to a CDF board meeting and say, hey, this is, this is a potential risk. And they need to be aware of it because. All um, CDF projects are hosted on Docker Hub. So it would be a reasonable strategy.
Okay, all right. So I'm putting myself an action item to propose something to the CDF board. Anything else there on Docker terms of service? So effective date, tell me again, it was effective date is sometime in November. Okay, so lots of quiet. Ready to go on to the next topic then, or is there more that we need to discuss on Dr. Terms of Service? Nothing for me. Okay, Oracle Cloud conversation. So this was a uh, uh, conversation that started between Tyler C Croy and I believe Corey Quinn and someone at Oracle Cloud uh, expressing possible interest in hosting or contributing to Jenkins infrastructure. They initially described a Jenkins as a service on Oracle Cloud. And I don't think the community wants to create such a thing, but I would assume Oracle's developers would create such a thing. Then there was also mention of hosting some portion of the Jenkins infrastructure on it. And there, Olivier was suggesting that, hey, for instance, they could help uh, offload some bandwidth requirements. There are, we could conceivably host agents there as we host agents on AWS. Yeah, assuming that uh, there are stable plugins for that. All right. Well, and uh, that's a good point that uh, Oracle Cloud plugins may be needed. Well, there are Oracle Cloud uh, plugins available, uh, but yeah, they have a whopping uh, 100 uh, installations. And obviously it hasn't, they have never passed security review. They have never passed uh, whatever, well, at least uh, we haven't evaluated them. I don't know whether they would work, uh, but yeah, if you want to move uh, to Oracle, it's not just installing a plugin like EC2. But for EC2, yeah, you know the situation. It's also not that easy. Right, right. Well, I, so th that's some, some assessment process uh, before of, of the Oracle plugins before we deploy them, et cetera. Oh. Firstly, well, it's not a done deal with Oracle right now. So it right. definitely needs discovery before we even uh, deep, uh, dive into the details. What are the requirements? What are the strings attached, etc. It seems though that there's no reason we can, it seems that we could very readily continue those discussions uh, begin discussion or continue discussions with Oracle, see what they are willing to do, uh, bring status report to future meetings. Mm. Any objections to that as a plan? No objections from me. The talk is cheap. And does anybody want to volunteer to step in on those? I can certainly get involved in the conversations unless someone else feels like, ooh, I'd like to do that instead. I certainly have no bandwidth for serious conversation. I would be interested to be in the loop just for my information. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I cannot commit the bandwidth for something serious. Great. Yeah, I'm interested to be in a loop, but I don't really have time for it. That sounds good. So keep the infra team informed uh, and just continue the discussions. Exploratory. Great. Will do. Anything else on Oracle Cloud? 
Okay, last topic, release status reports. So Jenkins 2.235.5 has released. It includes an Alpine update, uh, security releases, security fixes, and an Alpine update, and then Jenkins 2.253 as released. And as far as I know, it also includes the Alpine update. And infrastructure did that when no issues detected in the infrastructure and no issues detected in infrastructure for 2.235.5. Any, any concerns from either of you on that, stating that as the report? Now everything was quite smooth. All right, that covered the topics I had. Any additional topics that we need to add? Well, just some heads up about my availability. So. These people on this call uh, already know it, but yeah, I will have limit, limited availability for the community until October uh, due to some uh, personal reasons and some work reasons. Uh, I will be still doing uh, key things like uh, Jenkins governance, also JSOC commitments, and a uh, little season of uh, docs, but yeah, most likely my capacity for any other efforts will be close to zero including hosting requests, permission management, and other things. Well, in any area, there are multiple people who have permissions and who are active contributors. So, yeah, it shouldn't be a big deal. I'm not aware about anything where it would be a bottleneck. Uh, but yeah, if you see anything or if you lack permission anywhere, uh, please let me know. Yeah. Thank you for thank you for what you do for us. So like much appreciated. Mm -hmm. uh, that's and we know that Olivier is out as well. So Olivier is out for at least a month. And uh, we're covering as best we can. Mm -hmm. All right, let's call an end to the session and thanks everybody. Recording will be posted. Thank you. And thanks for reminding uh, that I should post a recording from the last week's sessions. Oh, oh yeah, super. Talk to everybody later.